Hi, good afternoon. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Luan. I'm a Pilates and yoga teacher and educator, and I help people to become more confident in their body, to do what they love more often, and to achieve their physical ambitions faster than they've ever experienced before. I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about how to overcome challenges in your practice. And your practice could be Pilates, it could be any other practice that you do. Uh, we all know that we experience physical and mental challenges. And I want to give you my top six tips uh, how, to, how to handle those challenges. I want to start with a little story. Um, this morning, I took my son Ethan to school. And on the way, I was not noticing, I was singing, and then I was whistling. And uh, my son from the back was saying, um, wow, mommy, I wish I could whistle like you. And he was really upset. And I asked him, what's going on, Ethan? Why are you not doing it? So he said, well, I tried and I can't do it. So I asked him, okay, so how many times have you tried? And he said, three. <laughs> and then I was laughing a little bit. And then I said, okay, so what made you, what, how many times do you think you need to practice in order to do something? And we started to have this very interesting conversation. And then it became even more interesting. And he said, um, because he was convinced that he needs to practice a little bit more, and he started asking me questions. So can you tell me um, what is it that you do when you whistle? Um, and I started to tell him, you need to create that shape in your mouth, a very, very small circle, very small hole. And you need to allow the breath to come out. Um, and then he started asking me, but how much do you actually, you, you squeeze your, your tongue? What is it that you do with it? And I said to him, and I said to him what I always say when I teach, I said to him, you know what, just don't worry about that. Just think about the shape that you want to create. Think about uh, the function you want to just allow the air to come out and the rest will take care of it. And that's the two things that from, this conversa from these conversations, I really wanted to, to talk to you about this because you could see that he obviously almost gave up or he thought he was very depressed when he said that he thought that he's not able to do it because he had this idea in his head that three times of trying is enough obviously he's an eight-year-old but we do the same thing as, as adults as well we don't really know how much practice we need to 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 take part of in order to um, know that whether we can or we cannot do things and that's on its own something that mentally really discourages us. And also when we learn something, we try to do it by controlling our body, to squeeze this, to do this, rather than naturally letting it uh, learn. And this is what I'm here to talk a little bit more about. Okay, so when was the last time that you actually told your body how to do something. And I want you to think, not, not to think about Pilates and not to think about gym training, just think about your daily life. Let's say you wanted to lift a shopping bag. Are you actually saying to yourself, well, you need to grab the bag, squeeze this bicep, pull on the bag? No, of course not. You've never ever done that. And that's exactly the point. We need to understand the way the body, our body moves is that it works subconsciously, all right? There is a task at hand and it learns to move. Um, what is important is that we know that we are not born to know how to move. We are born with the ability to learn how to move. So if you take the example of a baby, um, if a baby stands up the first time in his life and he tries to take a balance he might be doing it the first time and put a little bit too much weight on his toes and fall on his face and then he will 
subconsciously know that this is the wrong way to do it. So next time it comes and tries to stand up, it will put a little bit more weight on his heels and maybe stretch the body a little bit longer, right? So, and then he will, he or she will fall on their nappy. So they know that they, again, put too much weight on their heels, but actually this time it wasn't as, um, as painful. <laughs> so you can, you can, you can, you get the point. So it has to stand up again and again and again and refine the movement. So the body will know exactly, the brain will be able to activate the nervous system and to know exactly how much contraction, so which muscles involved, because if, if it's the heels or the toes, a little bit different muscles so which muscles are involved how much do i need to switch them on what is the tension what is the uh, length of 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 um of contraction or movement so all those all that data is being learned as we move and it's the same with us adults until the movement becomes spontaneous and that's where i want to really go back to the goal what is the goal <laughs> so many of us train and we don't really ask this like what is the goal yes maybe we want to tone up we want to feel good but at the end of the day we want to move very spontaneously naturally and with pleasure we want to enjoy movement we don't i mean pain is one thing but also sometimes having any kind of rigidness in our body we want to enjoy movement and that's something that comes with practice so practice 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 and as we understand now this is the way that the body learns to move through practice and because of that as the baby we might be falling on our bottom okay so but that's an essential and imperative part of our learning process so I want you to remember that because next time when you are experiencing any kind of challenge in your training, I want you to remember that the challenges are not in your way. They, they are the way. So I'll say it again. The challenges are not in your way. They are the way. Okay. So you know that those challenges have to take place. There's nothing wrong with you. You just doing it, you are on the journey, you are on the path, right? So physically, we know that we need to be challenged and we need to overcome those challenges. We need to keep trying for our body to learn how to move. So if until it becomes very efficient and what is efficient, if you think about it, if you think about a task, for example, if you stand up, <clears throat> you're not feeling that you're using muscles because your body has mastered standing up and it knows exactly what's the amount of muscle tension that it needs to produce in order for you to stand up for the longest amount of time and that's exactly in your weight training in your running in your pilates training in your yoga you learn and you learn and you practice until any something just becomes this very efficient very effortless movement but the way is difficult, right? And that's why I'm, why I'm here. So, okay, we understand it's challenging, but how do we overcome, this overcome these challenges mentally? Because mentally that can be very frustrating to, to go through those challenges. So firstly, when, uh, when I uh, observe my students, when they practice, I can tell you that most of us have the same response when we encounter uh, a physical challenge. So most of us will either stop, so completely stop doing the exercise. And we'll talk about that later, why we stop and how we can overcome that. Or, or they stop their breath because they're so much in uh, stress. Sometimes I notice that we immediately shut down. We basically drop the head so if you think about yourself in a plank position, you drop the head. Yeah, maybe not you, but we drop the head. It's like we surrender. It's like we're trying to, to escape, <laughs> escape the moment, escape the situation. Um, so all of those 
all of those very natural um, responses are ones that might help us in some sort of way. Maybe we, we get distracted a little bit, we try to think about something else, but I'm here today to offer you some other techniques that I find to be much more useful rather than trying to escape the situation. Um, so here's six different techniques that I can suggest uh, that I use personally on myself and that I try to, to use it as much as I can with my clients as they train. So firstly, let's just remind ourselves, what is the goal? The goal is that we practice with a peace of mind, all right? To really become as we practice, to feel more present, to feel that we are bigger than our problems. And to be honest with you, that kind of state of peace of mind, it's not only for our practice, it's not only for our math. Really, we want to achieve that state of mind throughout our daily life. But I'm here to suggest something that maybe, maybe will be a little bit new to you. I see the practice on the mat, the easiest way for, for us to practice mental strength. It's when we practice and when we push ourselves physically, it's when we notice all those thought patterns that come into our head that are there all the time. But when we are focusing on ourselves and developing ourselves on investing ourselves on the mat, it's when we have the opportunity to really, really notice those thought patterns and maybe do something about them. Okay, so I already said, so the, the first thing, <laughs> the first thing that we want to do when we are on our mat is to notice. I really like the word notice because I think this is something, this is a verb we have to really kind of think about and stick to. It's what we, what I'm always saying, please just pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, notice, notice. So this should be our main goal when we first start a program or classes, but really all the time, because this is what's going to make us focus on our journey and not on the results. And I'll talk about that later, but maybe taking it to a more practical words, when you're, let's say, holding a plank again, so just as, you know, obviously just an example, you start to feel different things. You start to feel sweaty, your heart rate goes up, maybe you feel fatigued. So that's the experience itself. This is the physicality yeah, that's going on. When in addition to that, there's more coming. <laughs> there's the thoughts that in your head, in our head, we all experience that. Those thoughts could be different things, but that's something that you would need to experience with. When we are on the, that edge, it's when those thoughts starting to come up. And normally there's the same thoughts again and again. We're just not noticing them. We think we are, they are part of us. So thoughts like, I'm too old for this. <laughs> oh, why have I chosen this class from the beginning? Because this is obviously not for me. Um, what is it actually doing for me? Um, I can't do this. It's going to hurt my back. So... Those thoughts, most of them are not really serving us well. All they do is they do what I just said. They maybe make us stop the breath. We're getting stress. We're getting more anxiety. And then uh, the experience becomes much more difficult than what it really is. Now, what I'm saying to you now might sound like a fantasy or something very important like something impossible. I can't achieve peace of mind when I'm doing a plank, Liron. I can, I can hear your thoughts from here. So you need to trust me on this one. This is a muscle that we can train. We can train it equally with training our body muscles. And this is something that will make you feel differently. And it, you don't have to go into a plank position for that. You, know, you can think about um, things in your daily life. So this is really the practice of mindfulness and meditation. So if you have, you don't need to meditate and sit down to do that. If you have, let's say, um, a car is passing in the road uh, and making a very, very big noise. 
just notice, okay, there was a noise. It's, it's there. You're not, you're acknowledging it. It's not that it hasn't happened, but that normally triggers thoughts. So we extrapolate and we story, there's a lot of storytelling. Okay, so who is that? And why are they doing, uh, why, why are they making those, those noises? And, and then there's emotions coming up as, as a result of those thoughts as well. And so there is a little gap between the stimulation, which is the noise in that example, and our thought. And that's the gap where th there's, there's a lot of gold that you can take and you can really change the way you practice. So when you're in that challenging exercise, just notice your thoughts. Just notice, I'm not even saying to, to you, try to push them away or do something about them. Just notice your thoughts. So that's the first thing. I think it's the hardest thing to do. So if you can't do it the first time, remember my son, he practiced three times and it didn't work for him. So keep trying, keep doing it. Um, this, the second thing is really about going out of your head and into your body. So if I'm, so that's, that's the second step. After you've noticed your thoughts and they will come, you're not supposed to push them away. I mean, some, some people think that mindfulness or meditation, the goal there is really to push the thoughts of, away or have empty head, no thoughts. That's not going to happen. That's going to happen only when we maybe die. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Those thoughts are still going to come. The thing is, is where do we focus on? Because where we focus is when we grow. Okay, so if you focus on the challenges, the challenges will grow. If you, fo if you focus on the alignment, the alignment will improve. So the tip that I can give you, that's the second tip. It's really about focusing on your breath. You don't need to change your breath. I know sometimes I say breath and people start to panic. My breath is horrible. I don't know how to breathe. You don't need to change anything. I just want you to listen to the sound of your breath. You have a breath. It's there with you all the time. Just take a moment and listen to it. If it's hard for you to listen to your breath, then maybe when you walk, listen to the, to the steps that you're making. It's really about focusing your mind on something very physical, something that is there. Okay, so the breath is the best thing for me because it's, this is your body and it comes with you everywhere. Um, <clears throat> the second thing is that you can focus your gaze. I know it sounds very simplistic, but notice when your eyes start going wandering around, and especially if you're in a class and there's other people around you and you start to look at them or you look at the teacher, what happens is that it Im immediately triggers your mind, yeah, because we are so visual, we are, we are, we are so uh, predominantly uh, relying, reliant on our vision. So what I'd like you to do is just focus your gaze. So if you're taking a balance, you're focusing on the horizon. If you're in a plank, you're lengthening the neck and you're focusing on your mat. So it's really, really important that you focusing on one point so you can really focus on your own body um, when we start to look around, our mind wanders. We also go somewhere else with our mind. We start comparing ourselves to others, or maybe we start thinking about something that happened in the past, and that takes the joy out, and it, it increases the challenge that we experience, okay? So that was the second tip. So think about your home base, your breath, and your gaze. The other thing that is very much integrated in your Pilates training anyway, it's a body scan. So I, I hear many times people who do Pilates, they finish the class and they say to me, I can't believe it's finished already. It's, has it been an hour? And I'm like, yes, it has. Because it's, it's suddenly it's such a big difference in the way that they experience exercise. The exercise in the past for them would be counting the repetitions and really looking at the clock all the time and suddenly the time flies and it's simply because they are mindful the practice itself makes makes you very mindful of your alignment of where you are in space so you could 
just rely on the teacher, for example, to give you those cues and they will give you the cues because this is an integrated part of the training. They will tell you, you know, exactly how to align yourself. However, if you are in an exercise, let's say, again, take the plank because everybody knows the plank. If you are in a plank position, you could initiate that body scan on your own and you can start to think about everything, every single part from the heels to the head. Okay, so you can use, so, okay, so I'm pressing my heels down. Let's say I'm standing. I'm pressing my heels more down towards the ground. I'm lifting the arches of my feet. I feel them ascending up towards my calves and towards my shins. I feel the kneecaps lifting, quadriceps engaging, lower abs even pulling in. I'm lengthening the tailbone between my legs. I'm relaxing the ribcage, opening my chest, bringing my chin back. I'm pressing my feet down and lengthening the crown of the head up towards the sky. So obviously you don't need to say that. I just want you to scan your body. Think about your feet positioning. Notice them, notice. Think about every single part. Just go up gradually from your heels to your head and it will take you again. It's not about distraction. It's just going actually deeper into your body rather than into your head. I hope that makes sense. The other thing that I want to uh, give you, this is the fourth tip, is normally I see people stop the exercise when it's becoming challenging. And I can tell you that stopping and starting again takes a lot of your mental and physical energy. So if you can, and I want you to try it and see if it helps you, but if you can, when you are in a challenging exercise, if you can avoid stopping the exercise, I'm not talking about pain, which is not good for you, I'm talking about fatigue. If you can try to avoid stopping and just modify the exercise. So if you're in a plank position, instead of stopping, place your knees down and continue to do the exercise. Uh, if you're in a teaser position when your legs are up in the air, maybe lower, maybe place one foot down and continue working with one leg. And then it doesn't mean that you modify, uh, you regress, you can also progress. So if you have 10 repetitions, maybe you'd start the full exercise, do two repetitions. When you do it a little bit easier, then you are back again, you're good. You go back to the full, mod the full exercise. So flexibility in our mind is very important. And you'll see that sometimes just regressing a little bit is going to help you physically rather than stopping and starting again, stopping and starting again. So that's my fourth one. The fifth one, and it might sound a bit silly. I have six tips, by the way, so two more. The fifth one is really about your imagination. Because when you're starting, let, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. When I, I, uh, I started uh, running about two years ago, really like kind of um, regularly, and I'm not a great runner. I, I can tell you that I'm hypermobile and it's, it's, it's quite kind of difficult, very slow. And it was very challenging um, in the beginning, especially. And what I tried to do is I tried to envision someone else that I know. It's, it's a she and she is an amazing, she's an amazing runner. When I look at her running, she's so effortless and light. And her posture is amazing. It's just business as usual for her because she's so used to run for many, many years. So I, I kind of pretended to be her. <laughs> and so immediately I got that new posture and the whole run felt a little bit different because I basically recruited my muscles differently. This is like more the physical explanation, but mentally it felt easier. It felt, obviously I wasn't her. But I got into that peaceful state of mind that I'm trying, this is the goal, remember, so that I wanted to get into. So if you practice Pilates, maybe you pretend to be a ballet dancer who does Pilates. So you really pick your, if you pick your own uh, role models, but this is something you might want to try. And something that is um, also very, very useful for me, and this is my last tip, it's really about 
um, using less muscles in the exercise. And I'll explain to you what I mean. When we start, as I said, because I remember the baby, the baby, when it starts to stand, it recruits his muscle, it over recruits his muscles. It really, really, it, it tries hard, it contracts. He doesn't really know, his body doesn't really know how much contraction, how much stimulation it, it's, it is needed in order for him to stand. And that's exactly for us. So when we, it's the same for us. So when we start a new exercise, try, okay, so give it a go, do it the first time, whatever exercise it is, and then tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna do the same exercise, the same, I'm gonna achieve the same shape. I'm not gonna change the shape. I'm gonna go as high or as whatever I'm doing, but I'm gonna use half of the muscle strength that I used before. And obviously half is very fluid. I'm just, it's just some kind of an instruction for your mind. And then try the exercise again, maybe one or two times. And then, okay, you've done it. And then try it again and say, okay, now I'm gonna try it again using half of the half, half again of what I did before. So you want to, again, find that sweet spot the least muscle strength when you do the exercise. Okay, so this is my six tips uh, for today. So we talked about noticing and being mindful of our thoughts, of, of our thought pattern. We talked about using our breath and our gaze in order to go into our body and out of our head. We, talk, we talked about a mental body scan that can really help us again going into our body. Um, I didn't say that, but that's something that you might want to know. I also use breathing to relax the muscles. So if you're, let's say you're in, you're doing your body scan and then you realize that you have a, some kind of a tension in one part of your body, because you've, you've done your body scan, you're very much aware of what's going on. I know it sounds a bit spiritual or, but anyway, I want you to try it and tell me if that worked. Try to breathe into that area. So really kind of direct your breath there. It really works like magic. Then we spoke about the fourth one was about stopping and beginning, stopping and beginning. And try to avoid that, just using modification instead of stopping the movement. The last one, the last two was finding a role model and try to imagine you with them, pretend you them and move like them. And the last one was using half of your strengths to do the exercises. So I hope all of those tips have been useful for you. And I'd love to hear from you and how, how that affected your workouts. Keep training intelligently. See you soon. Bye.